So now it's recording. Um, have you guys used Blackboard at all so far this week? We no? Talked about, talked about it? Okay. Blackboard is not required for this class, but it has some things out there that are very handy for you, and I'll show you how that works. First of all, this is just WITC's main page. If you go on the top here, there's the six quick links. Now that's where you get your email. Um, for you guys, if you don't have any classes that use Blackboard, checking email is not a huge deal. But I would still say you do it at least once a week or every two weeks because our administrative office is going to be communicating through email to you. They're not going to be sending letters to your home anymore. It's like if you have a bill due or something like that, they're going to be sending it in your email. So make sure you are checking that a little bit. The one we're going to look at is Blackboard. How many of you have at least logged on to a computer in this building? So you know your login and your passwords? Okay, so I don't have to go over that to make it work. There's always one in every group that, for some reason, it just doesn't work. And yeah. Not working again. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Well, hopefully it keeps working. <laughs> Tired of remembering what your new password is? Yeah. Okay, so you get you log in and then you get to choose Math 373. And when you get into Blackboard for this course, it's going to look like this. This is just a simple introduction announcement from me. It really doesn't mean a whole lot for you. Where all the important stuff is, is under course information here. So this is my contact information. By the way, I'm Todd Huff. All of you can just call me Todd. We're all adults, so I don't need any titles. The best way to contact me is through email. I know that's a little small from where you're sitting, but I'll show it to you a little bit bigger in a little bit. And then, I mean, I have computers in the room here. I check my email at least once or twice a day, so I get your message pretty quick. If you can't get to a computer, you can leave a voicemail. And I have the Ray Slate campus number posted up there, but you can actually call any campus or the 800 number. And just dial that extension then, and it'll take you to my voicemail. I never go to my office, so if you call, don't expect me to answer the phone. But I do have it set up so it sends me a message through my email when there's a voicemail, so I go check voicemails. Otherwise, I really only go to my office like once or twice a week to make sure there's no packages in there. It's not a pleasant place. So anyway, that's how to get a hold of me. The other things that are here right now... Um, my schedule, I'll show you that, just, it's partially complete, there's a couple of things left off. My schedule changed like three times last week, so I think you guys were one of the groups affected. Um, right now, you guys are scheduled now, and this is the way it'll stay, this hour, of course, on Tuesdays, and then on Thursdays, you, you're an hour earlier, you're 1.30 to, to 3.20 on Thursdays, so you're two hours on Thursdays. It used to be Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, as you can see, for this class, I am available. I am free the hour before class. I think you guys are probably still in the shop, though, aren't you? Mm -hmm. okay. If you need to, I know Rick will probably let you out early if you need to come and get help or anything. So that's probably your best bet. Your Thursday class, I'm squeezed up tight both before and after. But if you need help with something, we'll figure out sometime I can meet with you. Um, our syllabus is out there, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you this. Um, since there haven't been any classes yet, there's nothing down below here right now. But that's where the links to your class recordings will appear. So I'm going to go to a different class here that has recordings. Like this one should have some out there. So you see they got the same stuff, but down below they've got this is the date, and then this is the recording for that class. So if I click on it, it takes you, like I said, YouTube sites. It's not secured. It's open to the public. I don't have the volume on right now, but all you're gonna, all that's recorded is what appears up on the screen there. Here, I'll do it full width, so that's the actual recording. So what appears up on the screen is what's recorded with any sound laid over it. So my voice or anything you guys say or any noises you make will be laid over it. Use them however you want to. I, mean, I don't record them as an excuse for you to not to come to class, but I realize every now and then things happen and you can't make it. So it allows you to view class and catch up if you have to. Or I realize I sometimes tend to talk a little fast. And you might be looking through your notes later and 
realize you missed something and not sure what it was, so you can fill in the, the holes there if you need to. You know, feel free to use them however works best for you. You can invite your friends over on a weekend, put it up on a big screen, and pop some popcorn if you want to. If you charge admission, I get half. <laughs> Nobody's paid up yet for some reason. I don't know. Okay, let's look at the syllabus is also there. I don't hand out a paper syllabus anymore, mainly because most of them ended up in the garbage can on the way out the door. I will kill enough trees this year. I'll save a couple here at the, the front end. Um, there's my contact information again, a little bit bigger if you need it. For the email, it doesn't matter whether you use capital letters or small letters. Um, you guys are here, so I don't need to tell you where and when class is. Course descriptions, actually I'll move into this. I'm going to go down to our competencies. These are the list of topics we cover in the course. Operations with whole numbers, fractions, and decimals. Ratios and proportions. Converting percents, calculations with percents, some basic algebra. Um, we do a lot with measurement, converting measurements and operations with measurements. And then uh, using formulas, solving equations, rearranging formulas, working with variables and that stuff. Now, I realize a lot of you are looking at that listing. I've done all that before. This class might be kind of easy for me. And... Yeah, those are most likely topics you have seen before. And if you are looking at that thinking, man, I could use my time better somewhere else, there is a test out process. Um, this is a two credit class that costs you 40 bucks to attempt the test out. And what you do is you'd have to do it by noon on Friday. You would take the test, and if you get an 80% or better, you get your tuition back for this class, which is about 300 bucks, 290 something. And then you get credit for the class, and you don't have to come for the rest of the semester. Uh, one thing I will warn, if you're going to do that, check with financial aid to make sure that not being in class isn't going to affect your financial aid. Sometimes cutting those credits has an effect on your financial aid. But anyway, if you don't get 80%, you lose your 40 bucks, and you're stuck back with, the, with me here for the semester. What's that? It's a gamble. It's a gamble, yeah. You're putting 40 bucks out there. If, you, if it's something you're interested in, come and talk to me. In the past, the pass rate's only been about one in three that pass, which is a little surprising. But most of the people that don't pass, it's not because they didn't know the material. If they looked at the list, they said, oh, I know all that, and they just went and took the test. They didn't prepare for it. Helps if we review a little bit and study a little bit. So if you're interested, come talk to me, and I'll make sure you know what to look over and what to study and so you know what to expect. Okay. So back up here, our book, textbook for this course is this one. Hopefully yours is a little bit better condition than mine. It's a custom published text, so it saves you a little bit of money up front. The problem is with it, you can't sell it back. It's a trade-off. You can either pay 250 bucks for it and the full text and sell it for 30 bucks at the end of the semester, or what's this one, like 160 now? Yeah, so 160 and you get nothing back. So you're still ahead by not being able to resell it. Um, if those of you, anybody that doesn't have a textbook yet, the only group I think that's on campus right now that has had this class would have been automotive, auto tech. So some of those second semester students might still have their book if you want to try to buy a used one from them. Otherwise, if you're going to save your book and sell it, auto tech is the only group that starts taking this course in the spring. Other things that you'll need. Um, not required, but very, very highly recommended is a scientific calculator. I know uh, today's day and age, a lot of people never own a calculator because they use it on their cell phone. The one thing that most of the cell phone calculators don't do well is fractions. I had a student like two years ago showed me a great cell phone app that did fractions really well, but when I went to try to download it, I couldn't find it. So have you tried math for it? No, that I haven't. Really good. Does that one pretty good? Does it have a fraction function on yeah. it? Okay. And so if you have one like that, that's fine. I don't mind you using the cell phones. If you show me, man, show me that one sometime. Maybe I'll write it down. Okay. No, scientific. I'm, I'm not talking about graphing calculator. Um, the graphing, like the one I have up on the screen here is a graphing calculator. You don't need one that fancy. That's just the one I was able to get for free to put on my computer screen. Um, in fact, the graphing calculators don't do fractions very well at all either. 
Well, most of them don't. There are a couple that do. No, the, the simple scientific calculator, if you have one, chances are it's good enough. If you're not sure, let me know and I'll look it over. If you don't have one and you're looking to buy one, I always recommend the Texas Instruments TI-30. It's like 12 to 14 bucks. Spend the extra $2 and get the solar instead of the battery. Because I've got like a half a dozen of them up in my office that the batteries are dead. So it's like 4 or 5 bucks for batteries and 12 bucks for a new calculator. Okay, so that's out of the way. Any questions on the topics for the course or anything like that? Anybody strongly considering the test out? No, I'm on Friday. I said talk to me later. You, you have till noon on Friday right. to, to take it. I believe it's noon. I mean, they might. it depends on what the hours are at the information center. Right. Right. Okay, the important stuff, grading. 80% of your grade in this class is on tests and quizzes. There are five units in this class, so there are five unit tests. Those reach 100 points. Quizzes um, are usually unannounced. They're between every two and four hours of class. And they're anywhere from eight to 20 points. And I'll explain in a minute why there's so many quizzes. The other 20% of your grade is your homework and participation. I will almost never collect homework and grade. Two reasons for that. One is this semester I have like 135 students. Um, there's no way I could collect your homework every day and grade it and keep my sanity. Second is you're all adults. You've seen a lot of these topics before. My theory of homework is it's something you use to learn the material. So you know how much you need to do. If you do a couple of the first problems and they're really easy, jump ahead a few to the more difficult ones. I'm not about you sitting there doing busy work on stuff you already know how to do. That doesn't mean ignore the homework and don't do it. Because um, I will tell, tell you this. A lot of times things seem really easy when we're doing them in class, but when you go to sit down and do it yourself, it's a little bit more, well, it can be a lot more difficult just because you don't have the context of class telling you what to do. So make sure you at least look at it and do some of it. So basically that homework and participation turns into show up for class, don't upset the teacher. As you can tell, I'm really tough to get along with. So that's why the quizzes are, like I said, every two to four hours. Um, that's my way of knowing if you guys are getting it. If I didn't cover something well enough and I have to go back over it again, or maybe I have to pull somebody aside and work with them a little extra on a certain topic, that keeps somebody from getting too far behind before I catch it. Then this is the standard WITC grading scale. I'm sure you've seen that a couple of times. Withdrawals. Um, that's why test notes have to be done by noon on Friday. Um, the, the deadline to withdraw and get a refund on your tuition is Friday. So if for any reason you need to change your schedule, do it this week. Otherwise, if for some reason you need to drop classes later in the semester, there's a deadline. It's somewhere around week 13. It's the 80% point. If you drop after that, it appears on your transcript as an F. So make sure you, if something does come up partway through the semester, make sure you talk to someone. We get that handled for you. Final grades, you don't need to. College policies, that's just saying that all the policies in your student handbook apply in here, so look for your student handbook. Academic integrity, don't cheat. That one's easy. There are a lot of things that I allow you to work with each other on. The biggest thing I ask is don't just write down the answer of the person you're working with. Make sure you know how to get it because the stuff I'm teaching here is not just to entertain me. I mean, to some extent it is some days, but um, I didn't mean that seriously, by the way, for those of you but most of the stuff we're going to do in here, you're going to use on the job site in some form. Okay, if you have any needs, whether it's a diagnosed disability or maybe you just have always struggled with math or maybe you get test anxiety or whatever it is, um, maybe just the room's too crowded, you can't concentrate when you're taking a test, let me know. We'll figure out something to get you through. My attitude is I am here to help you learn what you need to, to to get through your program. It's not my job to flunk you out of your program. So as long as you're here and putting in the effort, I will do everything I can to try to get you through. Podcasts and videos, that's just my warning. Like I said before, the class is recorded. It's out there for the general public, so don't say anything you don't want your mom to hear at some point. And then that's just the five units for the course, so the five unit tests. Any questions? Okay. 
So I'll end that. I normally I just keep recording through the whole lecture, but I'm gonna end